All right. Here we go. Now we're good. Hey, I apologize for being late up front. I was trying to get through some Zoom issues myself. So thank you for being patient. Yeah, yeah, no problem. It's great to meet you. Where are you located? I'm in Nashville. Oh, excellent. That's a wonderful place. I'm in Kansas City, so it's yeah. great to meet you. Um, and, and I'm looking forward to getting into your field of work. But before we do that, I want to know, four years ago, we were trying to figure this whole pandemic out. How long is it going to last? How is it going to affect everybody, especially in the medical field? It affected that that sector quite heavily. How did you get through that time period and how did it change the way that you do things now? So what happened? We just did everything telemedicine. Yeah. So, you know, telemedicine was so, so, but during COVID it was amplified and that became the norm. So we survived just by doing telemedicine to all the, um, you know, sleep patients. That was perfect specialty to do it. So it was not a big deal. Yeah. So let's get to the heart and soul of what you do do in, in your helping people through their sleep problems. If I put you in front of a bunch of third grade students at career day and one of the kids said, hey, what do you do for a living? What yes. would your answer be? I'll be, uh, I'll be telling them, hey, kids, I'm the guy who likes sleep and wants to teach you how you guys to sleep so that when you sleep, you're not cranky because you everybody knows that this child needs a nap. Because guess what happens to all of you? you ask your parents, they're going to be cranky. So uh, a child that has slept well will be an awesome person. So you'll have all the energy. And I'm going to teach you guys how to uh, discover your own power, just like eating and getting dressed, dressed up or studying. I'm going to teach you how to sleep. So what did you want to be when you were in the third grade? What was your dream? You know, that's a really interesting question. Uh, you know, I come from an Indian culture where the parents have a lot of influence on anything a child does, including their own profession. From a very young age that I can remember, my parents always said, hey, you will be great in the medical field. So I never knew anything other than becoming a doctor from a very, very young age. So, And, you know, they saw something in me that I'm, I can care. I can, you know, uh, do things. Right? So that's the path I chose. So talk to me, if, if let's say you had to find a different job to do based right. on what you, your skills, yes. what else do you think you would want to do? Is there anything else or has it always been medicine? So, I mean, I have asked my questions. I would, I would have loved to serve in the CIA. <laughs> <laughs> so really, I can blend with everyone and just uh, blend with everybody and talk to everyone and go to different levels. You know, I read, I travel. I know, you know, because coming from India, I know a few languages. I can connect with the human spirit very, very quickly. So another a detective or a CIA would have been my other choices. <laughs> Excellent. So let me ask you this. Yes. Sleep problems, how prevalent are they? How prevalent is this problem in this country? It is huge. The The stats show it's only a third but I'm saying almost 80% of the people, because sleep problems, the challenge with sleep problems is it doesn't hurt or it doesn't grow like cancer. So everybody ignores it. But then 10 years of the same problem, it catches up with you, affects your health from within. You know, your blood pressure is uncontrolled. You're in a mental fog. You are cranky. It affects your mental health. You know, more anxiety and depression. And you gain weight. And so, you know, you're driving sleepy, you're at risk for accidents, you're not performing well in school. So it affects every facet. It even affects your sexual life. So it affects everything. Uh, so, but it is the challenge that I face is people are not uh, re recognizing their own power. You know, I mean, I call it the superpower. So because it doesn't hurt, everybody ignores it. So you could have picked anything in the world of medicine to focus on. Why yes. was sleep the, the thing that you picked? Actually, I have four medical specialties. I've, I'm board certified in four specialties. I went to med school when I was 17. And so, uh, you know, I had, um, you know, lung problems. So, you know, I become a lung specialist, but I was always good at solving things I wanted to find out. So I become an intensive care unit specialist. And then the lung specialist and the ICU, what is always together is sleep. Uh, so about 25 years ago, sleep was coming up. And one of my professors said, hey, you need to focus on it. Plus, I discovered the power of sleep, you know, through in med school or tragedies when I don't sleep well. And then how well I am able to perform when I am, I mean, I've slept well. 
right? So I had that, uh, you know, uh, you know, knowledge that I'm a better person when I sleep better. So after 25 years of practicing all that, I said, this is a, you know, there's something called chronosomnia. All our sleep problems got worse after Corona. So I said, I'm going to do something. I moved out of my busy ICU uh, practice, started my own clinic. Then I see the same problem over and over. And then I said, let me write a book. So I am this ambassador. I'm going all over the world and many podcasts. I travel to India and I'm just, my aim is to uh, teach people how to sleep better. So what's the number one thing that you see, the common thread with all of all of your patients and clients with their sleep patterns? What's the one thing that, you, that you've localized as the main problem? One thing is insufficient sleep. People are not sleeping enough. Everybody is walking with a sleep debt. So that's what I see all the time. So who's been a hero for you? Who's been an inspiration for you in your life? Uh, my mom. Uh, she is very, She was a teacher. She was very smart. She actually taught me how to sleep. So she was very particular that everybody takes a nap. Even this day, I take a nap. The, the power of nap is coming back. People are talking about it. And so my hero, I mean, you know, me and her share, we were in a massive bus accident. Uh, she tried to save me. Her legs were all burnt. I'm the only kid who who, uh, who was, uh, you know, uh, escaped unhurt. Like 12 people died in that accident. So she's my hero in many ways. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, I know in Spain they have the siesta and they have that midday break. Yes. And and that's that's a time for rest. Do you think in state like putting something that like that in place in America would be beneficial to help? Absolutely. People? Absolutely. See, all over the world, if you look at Commonwealth countries, all the British rule countries, it's tea time. Everybody takes a nap, you know, so it's called siesta. I think in Portugal, they call it reposo. In, you know, in Iceland, they call it another name. So all over the place, people have seen what happens with our body our body goes into a lull around 2.30. See, listen, Joe, we, never, we never go to a meeting around 2 because nothing yet happens. You know, that's the circadian rhythm. You know, your body's uh, influence to sleep is counterbalanced by the sun. So the sunlight goes down, the pressure to sleep. So we are all tired at, you know, between 2 and 3, uh, you know, so especially 2 and 3 in the morning. So everybody should be in bed then. And also if you can take a nap, so we get through in America, we push through uh, by, I think if you take a few minutes of a nap and get a power nap, you will be better off. In fact, I'm proposing even uh, football teams not to have, uh, you know, third quarter, you know, I hear the Titans don't do well in the third quarter because they're sleepy. I wrote about that in my book too. So, so people can change a lot of things by just knowing when you're sleepy. So, uh, so the same thing, you never take a nap around 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. because that's the prime time. Just the opposite of 2 a.m. and 2 p.m. So, I, you know, there's so much we do without our conscious. So to answer the question, I'm, I would be a huge proponent of having a nap somewhere around two, two, between 2 and 3. You know, I love cats and I look at their cycle. Like yes. when they're nocturnal and yeah. when they're asleep, they're, they're so good. They're like precision machines. Yeah. And if we could mimic that, we'd yes. be in good shape. Yes. We're born to sleep. Our, you know, before the invention of electricity, we had the biphasic sleep. People slept all the time and, you know, they revolve around the sunlight. But now, ever since the light bulb came in, we've changed. And especially with, uh, don't get me started on the cell phone. Uh, it's the biggest uh, enemy for all of us and regarding so, sleep. Yeah, absolutely it is. So yeah. let me ask you this. If you can meet one person alive on the planet right now that you find fascinating, who would that be? Who would you love to meet and talk to? I'd probably like to sleep, uh, talk to Elon Musk. You know, I just want to see what it is in his, you know, creative brain. You know, uh, he actually is an interesting sleep uh, subject. He's blessed with a gene of a short sleeper. He doesn't sleep much, but he felt all his team are all the same. And so he made everybody work so hard. Then he came to a conclusion, hey, you know, they're not made like me. So he went on TV and news and said, hey, you know, you guys need to sleep. He's prioritizing sleep. A uh, few few people in the world have less, um, you know, uh, sleep. So he will be the guy I want to meet. So, what is what has been your motivation all these years to practice medicine to help people? What gets you up every day? Because you got to give a lot of yourself to help people. Oh yeah, yeah. And then, how do you evolve as well as a human being yourself? How do you balance all of that? Correct. So you know, life is a gift. You know, I, I've been given a gift of life many times. Uh, you know, the accident. So there was one doctor. You know, my mom, they, they made a decision to cut her legs off. There was one guy who said, no, we'll make conservative management. And 
thank God, you know, they didn't cut her legs off. So I became that doctor in many people's, you know, in lives in the ICU, you know, when people are ready to die, I said, no, let me, let me try my best, you know. So I became that person, to, you know, in many people's lives. So, you know, life is a gift. You know, I've been given this gift and I was good at studying, you know, so I know I can acquire knowledge. You know, I tried different skills, but this was easy to me. So I believe by sharing and talking more about your skill, you can empower more people. So, and I wanted to change the world. You know, I think the world is hurting we, we, because we are all, uh, you know, in, in different forms of hurt. So many things have happened in our lives, uh, you know. Um, so I think we heal in our sleep. I think if you, you know, like if you have a problem in your life, Joe, what do you say? We, we'll we say, let's sleep on it, right? Nobody says let's exercise on it or eat on it, right? So so we, we do heal. And I think I'm the guy, you know, my message is for this world to heal better by knowing the art of sleep. So what has been one of your favorite success stories with a patient? Um, you know, there's many. And of course, I deal a lot of people who snore. You know, people, couples are sleeping separately. That's called a sleep divorce. Uh, so anybody who snores is an easy fix. I, I bring them to my clinic. But on the other spectrum, there was one young girl who was sleeping too much. You know, she was called, you know, lazy. She was called depressed. She suffered like that for about 10, 12 years before you know, somebody said, hey, you know, uh, you know, she went to different specialties. Somebody figured out this could be a sleep problem. She was found to have narcolepsy, you know, which is like a huge, that's a dramatic improvement. She went on to become a fashion designer and, you know, like uh, like a girl who was called click, you know, lazy and, you know, and, and depressed. Now she's performing at the best. So that's the most dramatic. And, and I have a subset of anybody who, who might diagnose with narc narcolepsy will be pretty dramatic because it changes the life. Uh, and but of course, on a daily basis, you know, I fix snoring and inability to sleep. So of all of these things that you've done and accomplished at this point in your life, yes. what are you the proudest of? The proud of this is, is my book, the one that I wrote, the hottest thing I ever done, uh, because, it you know, it is a scientific book. I, I had to be perfect. You know, I can't make a mistake. Uh, so fortunately, he, four months has gone by and nobody has called me and said, you know, nothing but compliments. Uh, I, that's my fear, though. So I would say that's my biggest accomplishment of writing this book. So I really want people to run out and get this. Talk to, talk to me a little bit about your book. Give me kind of an abstract. So there's, um, you know, I've discovered the power, you know, I suffered with insomnia, I found a way, you know, I have sleep apnea, I found a way. So, so I know the power that we can unleash by sleeping better. You know, I sleep every night, you know, uh, minimum seven, maximum eight hours. So I, there's no book out there for the family, because I know if the child's not sleeping, or your husband's not sleeping, your grandparents. So there's, yeah, there's no book for the family. So I decided to write a book for the whole family, children, teens, of course, teenagers don't sleep much at all. And also women have more sleep problems. So I dedicate a chapter. I dedicate a chapter for older adults, athletes. So it's a comprehensive book. So I make people understand their sleep problem. And then I give the seven proven sleep strategies to help people sleep better. And I also have developed a Sleep Now course. I've taken the acronym. And if they can't do it on their own, they can just sign up for my course and, and do that. So let's say you have a dream tonight. You run into the 18-year-old version of you, and you could give that young version of you a piece of advice based on the life you've lived, the wisdom you've gained. What advice would you give that young version of you? I would say focus on your target and work at it every day. So I, I will teach discipline because we, as humans, we always think about that fear of not happening. Like I give the common example of missing a flight. We always are afraid of, but we never miss a flight. So people are always afraid of that. I tell people to demystify that. The chance of you doing it perfect will be much, much more than the improbability. of. So I would say I would teach discipline. I would say that is the key to success. What's the best advice you've ever gotten? Uh, my best advice, uh, one of my professors said, hey, you know, life is, you see with both eyes, let up one eye be your career, one eye be your family. So I have followed that to the T. So I always focus on my family because in the end, if my family life is not happy, I can't do the thing. So I've always uh, focused on my professional life and my family life. So at the end of the day, everyone out there has a perception of you, your family, friends, patients, readers, everyone around you, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? So... 
me, I would say I'm a kind, caring, uh, knowledgeable person who wishes well for everyone in the world. I want everybody to succeed. That's me. And when I die, I want to say, hey, here, here's a guy who lived a normal life and uh, what he walked the walk and the talk he talked. So I'm curious if we get off this call, you yes. can get a time machine pulls up in front of your house. You can get into that time machine and go back in time and see one event in human history, or you can go in the future and see what's going on. Where are you going to go? I would go and see the decision of war. What is that event that you know predisposes us to war? What was that? If you look at it, there may be small things which were incorrect. I would like to go to World War II, the beginning of it, and just the day before all those things happen and see yeah. what it was. That's fascinating. So yes. if anyone wants to pick up your book, they want to reach out, they want to learn more about what you're doing, any of the good business, where do they go? So my book's called Nobody's Sleeping, The Seven Proven Sleep Strategies. It's available everywhere, um, you know, uh, on all the major retailers. And my uh, my website's called Sleep Fix Academy, and I'm on all social media as Dr. Sleep Fix. This has been wonderful. Thank you so much for your story. It's so essential, wonderful work. Keep doing the great work. I appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. Enjoyed uh, talking to you. Thank you. Take care. Yes.